So today, as I mentioned, Cheryl's going to be talking about um, Grange and the progress and the advancements that they made last year. Um, last year, Grange won the award for cultivating innovation program from within the company, and it was an inside out. Now, we've been tracking innovation since 2012 when American Family and Allstate were one of the first companies to create innovation labs, and those were really an outside-in perspective of innovation lab. And what, when we saw the submission last year for Grange, what was so unique and special was the comprehensive in scope of their program, top down, bottom up, really centered in the the culture. And it was a really comprehensive design and amazing amount of activities. And when they submitted the program, they had just started, and it was what they had accomplished in such a short time and what their plan looked like. So we're thrilled to have Cheryl tell the story um, as the – as one of the leaders in the business executives, um, she sponsored and she helped influence and guide um, the amazing traction that they have. So I'd love to turn it over now to Cheryl. Cheryl, all yours. Thanks, Deb. Good afternoon, everyone. And uh, and thanks for letting me share a little bit about um, Grange's innovation and transformation um, journey. We were we were really honored last year to receive the uh, Innovation Cultivation Award from um, SMA, and so um, this slide was one of the slides that we uh, shared at last year's um, SMA summit, and this outlines some of the activities and the journey that we went through, particularly last year um, with our Innovation Incubator. And this was our first major effort in driving a more innovative culture within Grange, um, which was um, critical to us because it, it was really that first critical step in truly becoming a more innovative company. And you know, for us, um, creating an innovation incubator was actually one of our specific strategic initiatives um, that that we developed. And we did we did this with kind of a three pronged approach, and you can see it along the bottom there. So it was we called it the three C's, um, but it was about crowdsourcing, competition, and collaboration. And the thing that each of those um, methods had in common for us um, was that each of them were trying to engage associates and associates from across the organization, as well as making sure that um, each event or effort was really purposeful in terms of the objectives and the measurements and what we wanted to, to get out of it. So I thought I might share just a few high-level stats on where we ended 2017 um, with the Innovation Incubator. Um, we had uh, 479 unique users register with our innovation portal, which we had um, purchased the end of 2016. Um, and we used that innovation portal for crowdsourcing and ideation. And from that and from those efforts, we generated more than 50 ideas across a variety of topics and from, from all corners of the, of the organization. Um, one of the probably the most visible and exciting uh, efforts that we um, have undertaken have been the innovation wars. So we held four events. Um, last year, and each one of them focused on a specific business opportunity. Um, and we had one event where we also pulled in some of our key vendors, and we had another event um, towards the end of the year where we pulled in our independent agents and, and had an event with them. Um, but overall, we have had more than 60 teams participate um, with more than 200 individual participants, um, and those have generated about 60 unique um, ideas that that are um, that we're able to to activate on, and then finally we have an innovation white wall. Um, it's really simple. It's literally just a big white wall in um, a very high traffic uh, area um, in our home office, and we just we pose different questions and um, and it just encourages kind of free form responses, but in a really visible um, in a really visible setting. And so we've had hundreds of of responses posted to a variety of questions. So overall, we had about a quarter of our associates that took an active role in at least one of our innovation events in 2017, which we were really, um, which we were really excited about. So I think some of the keys to the success of the Innovation Incubator were really you know, making it visible across the organization and having clear support from senior leadership. Um, we touted this you know, 
from from the top down and, and throughout the year. Um, focusing on events with a particular business problem or an opportunity was really important so that there's really so that there's clarity of purpose and the people can see um, clearly the business value. Um, and then finally, the other thing that we did that worked well for us was we captured um, we captured sort of the processes that we were undertaking and the best practices and the learnings so that we created um, basically playbooks that could be leveraged um, in different settings and across the organization. And so for us, even besides the big innovation um, war events that we have, we continue to use the playbooks even in smaller settings. And so just recently we had um, our personal lines area that wanted to use the playbook just to do a, in one of its um, working teams that had a particular um, problem they were trying to solve and they just wanted to get some creative ideas and have a fun way of doing some problem solving so they were able to use the playbook in that smaller setting. So the Innovation Incubator has been um, a key to engaging our associates to, to helping to demonstrate the power of innovation and really that connection to the business, um, which, which what we were m most trying to do was really to change the culture because it, it starts with culture and, and we really feel strongly that um, for us to be successful, we, need, we needed to make sure that um, our culture uh, is becoming more adaptive, more transformative, and more innovative. Um, so that was a great success, but I, I thought it might be helpful as well, um, to Deb's point, to, to really talk about our overall um, journey um, because it, it was it's multi-pronged, and from, from our standpoint, um, it's really about how is it ingrained and grounded in our business strategy. And so, um, it, this whole um, concept for us really started in 2016 when we launched our refreshed enterprise strategy and we set a strategic vision for 2025. And so for us internally, um, we you'll see it all over our building, but, but we call it 50-50 by 2025. Um, and what that means to us is that we want to grow our business and while doing so, we want to change our mix. So today we're about 70-30 um, personal commercial, and we want to get that to a balanced mix of 50-50, and we want to do that profitably by the year 2025. And so when we were setting that, um, that vision, you know, we know it's bold, we know it's aspirational, and so in order to achieve it, we needed to fundamentally transform the company. And we knew that in order to do that, we needed to change the culture and, and have it be more innovative, less risk averse. And we really want to take advantage of the new opportunities and the technologies that, that are out there and that are, that are rapidly changing our industry. So in addition to creating this bold vision, we also um, refreshed our core values, which we hadn't done in for as long as as long as I can remember. And, um, and we added a particular value, and that value was solve creatively for tomorrow. And we thought that that would be sort of that perfect jumping off point for um, our strategic initiative around innovation and really to help um, our associates to understand that we, we want their creativity, we want their ideas, and to really embed that into, into who we are. So it ended up being um, a good jumping off point for us, and the innovation incubator was that kind of tangible way for us to bring, um, bring the value of Solve Creatively for Tomorrow to life and help associates understand, you know, what are the behaviors that we're looking for. So in 2016, we spent um, most of the year really trying to communicate effectively what our strategy was, where we wanted to go, who we wanted to be, how we wanted to, to get there, and that really set the stage for the work that we did um, around transformation and innovation in 2017. So obviously internally our largest effort was the innovation incubator, which, um, which we've talked about. Um, but for us, we also wanted to do more outside-in thinking and learning. Um, and so this for us involved kind of a smaller group of people, but, but what we did was really try to actively engage with startups, with accelerators, with venture capitalists, um, and with others working in the space like our reinsurance brokers and, and SMA. And so some of the specific um, activities that we undertook 
um, was a small group of business and IT leaders. We went out to Silicon Valley for a week and, and just kind of immersed ourselves in um, in the California sunshine and, um, and the startups. So we met with several startups. We went to plug and play. Um, we had a day-long workshop with one of our um, consulting partners that has a specific practice around insure tech. And so we really got, um, to, got a good view into what was happening there. We also sponsored uh, an Ohio-based fintech accelerator um, that was being piloted, and that was great because it gave us this up-close and personal um, look even into that selection process, um, which startups were out there, what were they doing across all of financial services, and then how do we evaluate those and, and see the ones that have the greatest potential, and then what does that curriculum look like that helps to accelerate their success. And of course, we attended a lot of conferences. We attended InsureTech Connect and others. Um, and then we, we found people who were experts in this space that we could learn from uh, and work with, like, like SMA. So all of those efforts did, um, did some, some really great things for us and kind of advanced our learning. So first, I mean, they gave us um, a base of knowledge and experience. So, so we could feel more comfortable with that we understood, you know, what the landscape looks like and, and how, to, how, how we fit into it. It also gave us experience in, you know, what to look for in startup companies and think about which ones could make really good partners for us, which ones might not be a very good fit, and how do we, how do we recognize the difference and what are the key attributes um, that we would want to look at from a startup. And then it also put our name out there, so that momentum just kind of builds. And so we have, um, we have people and companies reaching out to us with new ideas and new opportunities um, all the time because they know that we're active in the space. And so it becomes this kind of virtuous um, cycle. So you, you're out there and you're learning, but at the same time you're meeting people and your name gets out there and more and more people want to, want to um, talk to you and, and talk about ideas and opportunities. So, you know, when, when you have an organization um, like Grange did and at the, by the end of 2017 that's generating new ideas, it's, um, we're being approached with a lot of outside opportunities and other ideas, um, it can get a little overwhelming and it can be hard to make progress unless we have resources that are dedicated to it. And so for us, we had a lot of um, part-time resources working on it, but through the end of 2017, um, it became very clear that we were going to, to truly need to, to dedicate um, resources to make progress. And so that really has led into our evolution in, in 2018. So we feel like you know now we know the landscape, we know that there's great opportunities, so it's a great time to invest more resources, which is really both people and dollars, and that should help accelerate our progress. So on the people side, we recently appointed an innovation officer. I'm sure he's thrilled that I put his picture on the slide. Um, but he, he also has someone who uh, works with him. But he's an internal person. Um, he's got a finance background. Um, but he was also involved in the innovation activities. And so his role now is really to build out our internal framework and processes for turning the great ideas and partnerships into tangible products and services and benefits and to do that faster to support our most important business priorities. And then we had one other challenge um, that's, that's a little bit more um, unique, and that is that, you know, as a regional mutual company, we, we struggled to invest large dollar amounts in some of our innovation efforts because um, those tend to have, like, a longer payback period. And so while we have um, a lot of capital that we could invest, as a mutual company, those investments um, are treated as an expense from a statutory accounting standpoint, and so it was putting a lot of pressure on our expense ratio. And so to address this, we recently announced that we're transitioning to a mutual holding company structure. And so it helps us on, it helps us on several fronts. So, you know, one benefit is for our policyholders, and we can grant rights of mutuality to all of our policyholders, um, 
but it also, in this case, also enables us to make investments outside of our PNC operating companies so that we can make more meaningful, longer-term investments, but without um, negatively impacting our PNC company results. So um, we're hoping that the mutual holding company will be in place by January 1st of 2019. And so really, that's setting us up to be able to allocate more capital to our innovation efforts um, and to make even greater progress, um, ultimately, um, for us to, to be a winner in the marketplace and to get to 50-50 by, by 2025. So it has been, it's been a great journey. We've learned an incredible amount along the way, and I think we'll continue to, um, to learn and grow and adjust um, as we go along. Fabulous. Well, Cheryl, um, uh, thank you so much for presenting the, the journey. And, and to me, what a remarkable story of, you know, real transformation and action over a very condensed period of time. I mean, you, you've, you've picked off so many different strategies to really um, move forward with um, and, and declaring innovation uh, as, a, as a cultural norm for, for Grange. Uh, my question would be, um, that there are so many different levers that you pulled, and I'm sure over those two or three years, you've gained so many insights about, uh, all right, maybe we could have pivoted this way or done this. What, what would you leave if someone was on this call and they were incubating um, innovation in their company. What might what might be a, like a lesson learned that you could provide to maybe the attendees to give them some insight as as they might be moving forward with their own endeavors? Yeah. So uh, you know, a couple thoughts on that. I, you know, one one thing that became um, clear to us is that, and, and I think Deb mentioned it earlier, is that it needs to have clear support from the top. So we're very fortunate to have um, a CEO that is that, that absolutely believes in the need to transform and the value of innovation, and, and he speaks about it you know, regularly um, with associates. And so that's really important. I would say equally valuable um, are the evangelists that you find in your organizations um, that are, you know, in just kind of your your um, um, more frontline associates or managers, and those who are excited about it and um, and passionate about it, getting a group of those to do some of the of the heavy lifting and to do some of the creating on whether that be innovation wars or they're the ones who are who are going to mm -hmm. help drive the culture change and so um, making sure that you understand who those evangelists are and that you leverage them I think um, I think is really important in terms of in terms of changing the culture which which I think is critical um, the other um, thing I would say is I do think that the linkage to strategy and to the business is really important. It's important in helping people understand the value, and it's important from the standpoint of um, helping the organization, you know, realize the value. And so it can't just be about there's lots of shiny, shiny pennies and cool technologies out mm -hmm. there, um, mm -hmm. but in order to really get the value from it, it needs to be tailored to your own unique strategy and to your own unique organization in terms of what you need and what your priorities are. Yeah, I think that fun. that is so well. Yeah, I, I think and should be fun. Exactly. How do we make insurance fun? Now, now for anyone on the phone who wasn't there last year, they did. Um, the the two uh, presenters from Grange did show up in in superhero costumes. <laughs> they certainly certainly were were having fun. Uh, but I, I think that last point you made, um, you know, about the focus and it's how do you break through the noise of 1,200 and just feel so scattered looking at a shifting market and trying to learn and really hone in on those that are going to be most pertinent to your your company and your operation. Um, and and that that will yield, I think, um, you know, well used time and money spent um, because they are uniquely focused on the issues that you're trying to focus on. 